while these diets do promote quick weight loss, which can be really motivating for people, long term, usually most people can't sustain them. That becomes really hard. And then they can end up like binging or sort of, you know, quote, cheating on the diet and feeling like they messed up. And then they'll just completely go off the diet. Because I used to weigh around 40 pounds more than I do now. I really struggled with saying no to food, overeating, even overeating healthy food. Um, I tried a lot of different things to try to lose weight and I learned so much in the process and that really created this passion in me to help other women to do the same because I understand the challenges and I've learned what works, I've learned what doesn't, like you said, both from personal experience as well as from a more scientific background. Today's guest on Vegetarian Health and Longevity, a podcast by Hurry the Food Up, is Holly Soto, a registered dietitian who specializes in gut health and helping women to lose weight. She has so much knowledge and experience across various aspects of health, fitness and nutrition, and has also had a personal transformation with weight loss. In this episode, we dig into some of the specifics around weight loss, what diets work and what diets should be avoided, And we also dive into motivation and long-term weight loss success too. There's so much useful, practical advice in this, and I hope you enjoy our conversation as much as I did. Holly, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much. Happy to be here. Well, it's my pleasure because I've really been looking forward to speaking to you because you have a huge wealth of experience and knowledge spanning all of the areas which I love talking about. So health, fitness, nutrition, and you've got both professional and personal experience within these areas, which makes this even better. So you've got this professional academic side, but you've also been through your own challenges. So I think what we're going to talk about today will be even more relevant and relatable for people. So I would love to start here by just finding out a bit more about you and what you do. Sure. Um, So I am a registered dietitian. I'm also a certified holistic nutritionist. Um, I have a master's in nutritional science. And then my background um, was as a personal trainer and group fitness instructor. Um, So I've had a personal training and nutrition coaching business for almost 10 years now. Um, And I've worked primarily with women between about 30 to 65 years old largely for weight loss, um, but I also work in gut health and then sports nutrition for runners and triathletes. Um, And then I compete in triathlons and running as well for fun. Um, And I got into all of this in my like 20s and 30s because I used to weigh around 40 pounds more than I do now. Um, And weight loss was really challenging because I love food like many of us do, but I really struggled with saying no to food, overeating, even overeating healthy food. Um, I tried a lot of different things to try to lose weight, and I learned so much in the process, and that really created this passion in me to help other women to do the same, because I understand the challenges, and I've learned what works, I've learned what doesn't, like you said, both from personal experience, as well as from a more scientific background. Amazing. So I know today is going to be a great episode, and there are so many things which I would like to talk about with you, (laughs) Um, and we'll see how we do for time. But I guess one of the things I wanted to start with, which will just give us a bit of stuff to talk about and some avenues to go down, is fad diets. So we've both encountered them, and I'm sure they will continue to crop up in our practice. But I would love to get your take on what a fad diet actually is and why they're so appealing for people. Yeah, so I would say... Um, a fat, well, to start with, a fad diet is basically anything that is a fad. So anything that's becoming really popular, usually very quickly. Um, a lot of people are adopting this diet because they think it's going to be a quick and easy fix for weight loss or maybe some other health issue. So it's pretty easy to spot them because they usually cut out an entire food group um, or use a really extreme approach to eating or maybe even changing lifestyle. So Examples might be something like keto diet, carnivore diet, the cabbage diet um, that people used to do, low fat diet. And a lot of these are lacking good quality long term research to back them up. Um, And a lot of times they come from a good place. Like there's a good reason why the diet came about. There are benefits to it for certain 
population, certain people in certain circumstances. But then a lot of times it gets kind of blown out of proportion in media or, you know, kind of telephone game with people or one person tells someone else, and then it gets adopted by a whole bunch of people who are looking for that quick fix. So it usually promotes fast weight loss. It sounds or looks like it's going to be sort of like the magic pill. Um, And for the most part, I would say these days, if you're on social media and you're seeing a diet be promoted a lot, then it would probably classify as a fad diet. Okay. And you've mentioned some kind of potential pitfalls or issues with them but for some of the people listening some of what you've mentioned actually sounds quite appealing so the things like fast weight loss because that if we're talking about weight loss that is what people want they want to be able to lose weight they and often if they can do it quickly or easily then that's very appealing so what are some of the risks with it yeah, there are there can be quite a few risks associated. Um, again, one of the issues is that they tend to like demonize certain food groups um, or cut them out completely. Like right now, carbs is kind of the big one that everyone thinks that carbs are bad and they should avoid them. So while these diets do promote quick weight loss, which can be really motivating for people, long term, usually most people can't sustain them. Um, and so a lot of times in the process, If you are cutting out a lot of foods, people can become nutrient deficient because maybe they're not eating many fruits or vegetables or whole grains. Um, Also, like mentally, physically, it can be really tough. So if people are constantly restricting either one food group or a lot of calories or a lot of foods that they love, um, that becomes really hard. And then they can end up like binging or sort of you know, quote, cheating on the diet and feeling like they messed up. And then they'll just completely go off the diet um, and go back to eating whatever they want. Um, And this can lead to sort of this just like negative feeling about themselves. Like it leads to stress. It leads to feeling like I don't have enough willpower. I can't go on a diet. I can't stick with anything. Um, and it's just sort of this vicious cycle of like trying to lose weight and then, oh, I can't do it. And then trying again. Um, and a lot of times also, if people quickly lose weight, um, on, especially on something like keto diet or carnivore diet, because they're cutting out a bunch of carbohydrates, if they go back to normal eating again, right? Like they can't sustain it. So they start to go back to their normal eating habits, Um, they're going to gain weight. Like as soon as you introduce more carbohydrates, even if it's mostly water weight, you're going to see a change on the scale. And that can really mess with people mentally. When they've lost weight, they start eating normal foods again, and then they start to see a weight gain that can be really tough. Um, So mentally, there's these risks and all of that kind of stress can make it difficult to lose weight. Um, Also, people can lose muscle. Um, so if they're not eating enough food, they're not eating enough protein, especially, especially on the more extreme diets and people can lose muscle, which is really problematic as you know, for, um, you know, anyone over 40, but especially women, like we really need to keep our muscle mass, um, and protein is key in that. And actually a lot of diets, when you look at them and like how successful they are, one of the key components is how much protein people are eating. Um, And that's what can help prevent muscle loss um, and keep, you know, allow us to maintain muscle and keep a little bit better metabolism. And then also it's really important that women, um, everyone, but especially women again, are getting things like calcium and vitamins and minerals and healthy fats um, to keep healthy hormones and keep their bones and muscles strong. Um, so there's, I mean, there's really a lot of risks that can come with a fad diet if you stick with it a long time or mentally, if you can't stick with it. So there's so much you said there that, which is just amazing, which I want to jump into really. Um, I guess as a a kind of a sum up, there's, there's almost kind of, I guess, two problems with the, the fad diets as such. And the, the one is that there's actual direct health consequences if you follow them for a long time if they are particularly restrictive but then there's also the issue with the mental side of it and also consistency because that's what we often talk about with lots of 
or when when it comes to weight loss or exercise whatever it is it's around consistency and being able to stick to it on for for the long term and what you've mentioned there is that actually with fad dieting a lot of the time because of the restrictive nature whatever it is that you do to get to that point whatever diet it is that you follow that is the thing which is hard to follow for the most part yeah i would say that most diets just don't work for long-term sustainable weight loss um i'm sure you've seen it i've definitely seen it where clients have tried multiple diets um and still struggle to lose weight they go up and down And a lot of times people think, will say like, oh, this diet really worked for me, but it only worked for maybe three months, six months, but they're back to struggling with their weight. So did it really work? Like, sure, if you lost weight for a little bit, that's great. But if you didn't maintain your weight loss, it didn't really work. And most people have some reason like, oh, it was, you know, I missed carbs too much or I wanted to go out with friends and have drinks and have chips and salsa or have, you know, dessert or whatever. And, um, like it was just too hard to maintain, or I had, you know, life got too busy. I couldn't maintain whatever plan it was. Um, so yeah, I just find, I find, and the research finds that most people, it's just too hard to stick to a diet long term. They're great if you just need to lose weight real quick for a, you know, special event or something, but most people, I'm sure there's some that can stick with it for a long time, but the majority of people just really can't stick with these more strict fad diets long term. Just a quick break to say, if you're finding this episode useful, then I would be incredibly grateful if you could give the podcast a quick review on whatever platform you're listening on. It will only take a moment, but it will make a huge difference and help the podcast spread to more listeners like you. And you mentioned that certain diets like the ketogenic diet or maybe something like intermittent fasting that there are certain population groups that it might work for could you expand on that at all sure so kind of like i said before i mean most diets have some truth to them they have some good nuggets and came about for a reason um keto and intermittent fasting are probably the two most popular that i get asked about the most right now maybe carnivore also Um, so with keto, keto is largely kind of came about for people with epilepsy. So if you have that, great. That's, you know, it's a good diet for those people. Um, kind of like I mentioned also, if you're looking for like a, a quick fix, but you understand that it's a quick fix. Like if someone has a wedding coming up or a class reunion or some special event and they're like, I just want to lose 10 pounds. I need to look good for this thing. Even if I gain some weight back afterwards, that's fine. I just really want to fit into my dress or whatever it is. Then that might be a time that you could use one of these types of diets when that person understands this is not your long-term solution. You're going to go a little more extreme with your diet in order to lose some weight um, and look you know, the way you want to or fit into whatever outfit you want to fit into. But then you're probably going to gain some weight back once you go back to normal eating. Um, In those situations, or even maybe someone who's involved in like a sport that requires being at a certain weight, then it makes sense for short term use. Um, But even then, I would want to like, again, make sure that they understand if you're going to do this, you're probably going to gain weight when you reintroduce carbohydrates, you start eating a more normal schedule again, in the case of intermittent fasting, Um, and then also making sure they're still eating healthy food. So on something like maybe keto, are you getting healthy fats and lean proteins as opposed to eating, you know, all bacon and butter and processed meats and cheese and that type of thing. So I'd want to make sure they're still getting vegetables and fruits, at least to some extent. So they're getting fiber, they're keeping a healthy gut microbiome. Um, In intermittent fasting, a lot of people, I don't know if you find this, but I find that a lot of clients really like intermittent fasting There's something about it that works well for people and it appeals to them. Um, But what I would recommend is that if they're going to do intermittent fasting, they do probably the reverse of what a lot of people do. So a lot of people will not eat until maybe 11 a.m., 12 p.m., maybe earlier, kind of early morning or late morning, early afternoon, and then they'll stop eating maybe 7 or 8 p.m. at night. If someone wants to do intermittent fasting, I would say do the reverse of that. So eat most of your calories at breakfast and then 
kind of lunch and try to taper off throughout the day and stop eating earlier in the day. Because there's there is research behind people who stop eating earlier in the day have an easier time losing weight. So if two people eat the exact same amount of calories, but one is eating more like according to you know, when the sun goes up and down kind of like circadian rhythm schedule, um, that they will lose more weight than the person who's eating late at night. So if someone wants to do that, um, that may be a more sustainable approach for a lot of people um, that still allows them to get in healthy foods and eat a fairly regular schedule to some extent um, and can support healthy blood sugar levels and um, won't be quite as unhealthy as other things, other diets. Amazing. So actually, I hadn't heard of that and I haven't really come across many clients doing that, but I can see the the appeal behind it or at least the idea of moving things earlier on in the day. So definitely. Now, I, what I wanted to pick up on there is I think you've said probably my, or in some ways said my issue with a lot of the fad diets and that come through fitness influencers or things that you see online is that context or understanding is often missed. So in some respects, the diet isn't necessarily bad. And for some people, it might work. And if they have a healthy, balanced approach to it, whether that's intermittent fasting, whether that's the ketogenic diet, it can have could could be useful. But it's that understanding that you mentioned that okay, it probably isn't sustainable, or you might put weight on again after it. Whereas at the co- at the concept of it, or when it's sold to someone, it's actually this kind of um, revolutionary thing that is going to completely change their life. It's going to make them lose weight, but they don't get given any of the follow-up, any of the support, and they don't get the understanding of then how to make their diet healthy. Yeah, that's definitely true. Um, there's sort of, I think, you know, more extreme diets sell, um, on the internet. So people, yeah, are often promoting a more extreme way of eating. Maybe it's not as balanced of a diet. Um, and, and yeah, they don't really talk about like long-term what's going to happen, or are you going to be able to sustain this? Or if you do need to sort of come off the diet, what's a healthy way to do that? Like, how do you kind of back out of that and come back into normal eating without gaining a bunch of weight? A lot of that is not taught or shared um, online. A lot of people just promote, you just eat this way forever. Um, And then people feel bad because they can't do it, but apparently everyone online is doing it. Um, And I think it's really important to point out too, I know you just, I saw you recently had a podcast on diets and what works best for weight loss. So I would refer people back there, but it's, you know, a lot of research has found that basically any diet can work for the most part. So it's not that, you know, carnivore is magic or keto is magic or low fat is magic. Any diet can pretty much work for people as long as they're in a calorie deficit. Um, Now, some might give you faster weight loss or some might be easier to maintain muscle while you're doing it. Um, But a lot of people get sold this idea that like this is going to be what finally works for you. And really, they're all pretty comparable, you know, over months and months, as long as people are just not over consuming food and eating some sort of balance of nutrients. Yeah. And it's that context and then kind of understanding and support for the long term that that's so useful. So I'm just curious, have you had any clients or patients where you found that they followed a fad diet and actually found it really difficult? I have. I've had several. Um, I mean, I have a client who, well, she's kind of, I do group coaching and she's in that group coaching. She's not doing one-on-one anymore. But when we were in one-on-one, she was kind of more of that, like, I got to always be on a diet and figure out what's going to work for me. And I got her to a more kind of balanced way of eating. And she did start losing weight. Everything was going really well. And then after we stopped the one-on-one, she plateaued, didn't really tell me about it. And she decided, okay, I probably need to go back to one of these fad diets. For some reason, people just have this programmed um, in their minds and was struggling with it, like was struggling with energy. She still wasn't losing weight. 
was having difficulty in some of her workouts. So it was like going back on those was making it harder on her. She wasn't finding any more success. And so she is now going back to what we talked about and trying to do a little bit more balanced approach. Um, I also had a client who didn't have a hard time being on keto, um, but she was on keto for quite a while. Although technically, I don't think she was in ketosis. I think she was just doing a very low carb diet, which a lot of people do. They think they're doing keto, but really they're just eating low carb, um, which are two different things. Your, your body is supposed to be in ketosis for your body to use more fat for fuel. If you're not doing that, you're just on an extremely low carb diet. Um, so she was kind of doing that, generally tired most of the time, but she liked the diet. She had lost a bunch of weight on the diet, but she hit a plateau. And she could not get out of it. Um, and when she started working with me, she was already at maybe like, I don't know, 12 or 1300 calories, which is too little for most women. In case anyone listening doesn't know that, most people need to eat much more than that. Um, so she was already basically eating very minimal carbs and very minimal calories. So when someone gets to a point like that, and this happens a lot, I think with the fad diets, like you can't go anywhere else down from that. You can't cut more calories in a healthy way. You can't cut any more carbs. So then what do you do? You're kind of stuck. Um, and that's where she was. It was like, she was just stuck there. And I was trying to reintroduce carbs into her diet very slowly, very cautiously and letting her know she might, you know, gain a pound here or there, just mostly because of water. Um, and upped her calories, gave her a little bit more calories and she started to lose weight. Um, but then over time she started to get kind of freaked out by increasing carbohydrates and any little change with, you know, bloating or maybe a extra little bit of weight on the scale just mentally made it really tough for her. And she could not stick with a more balanced way of eating, even though it was working for her. Um, she just couldn't like get back to that balance. And that's, what's really tough is like for her, she was following the diet fine, but she was no longer getting results. And there's nothing else really you can do besides cut more calories. And that becomes very unhealthy at that point. And long-term that's going to lead to, especially as we age, like hormone imbalances and like I mentioned, loss of muscle mass and things. So um, that's where I see a lot of people go with it too, is they just keep cutting and cutting and cutting things out until you can't cut any more. And eventually you have to sort of move back to a more balanced way of eating which is usually easier with the help of a nutritionist, a dietitian who can kind of like slowly work your way out of it um, to avoid extreme weight gain. Something you said there is probably quite alien to a lot of people listening in that you mentioned you got your client to add in more calories and they were actually able to start losing weight. Can you just expand on that a little bit and why that might be the case? Yeah, so it's interesting I know it sounds like so foreign because everyone always, and we've all, I mean, I just mentioned you have to be in a calorie deficit to lose weight. Um, but interestingly, the majority of women that come to me are already really under eating. Like they, they've tried the fad diets, they have cut calories. So in theory, yes, you need to be in a calorie deficit, but when you go really low for a long time, um, you're, metabolic processes start to slow down. Like your body will sort of compensate because it realizes it's not getting the energy that it needs. It's not getting the fuel it needs. So it will start to conserve energy and slow things down. Our bodies are really smart. If it's not getting the energy it needs, then it's going to reduce the energy spent. Um, so a lot of people need to actually start eating more food because then the, their the body starts to get what it needs. It's starting to get the energy it needs to, um, you know, just do its daily metabolic processes for its, or, you know, our organs to function well, digestion to function well, our brain, all of that. Um, so sometimes when people start adding calories in, it actually becomes easier to lose weight because it's almost like the engines are revving back up within the body. You're giving it the fuel that it needs and it can start to work again um, more properly. And people might find that they're workouts are more productive because they actually have energy for their workouts or they can work out because they have energy for workouts um, or they start to just move more. So um, a lot of times what kind of is the difference in weight loss for people is something that you're probably familiar with, but what is called non-exercise activity thermogenesis or NEAT. 
And these are just like those daily movements of like what I'm doing. I'm talking with my hands. I'm moving around my chair, might be tapping your fingers or shaking your leg when you're sitting or kind of bobbing your head to music, dancing around the house, all those little like ways that we expend energy those tend to get shut down when we're low on calories. So all of that, plus things like more productive workouts, will start to happen more when you increase calories back in. So I know it's like really counterintuitive, and a lot of women have difficulty wrapping their mind around eating more food, but a lot of times that actually helps to get back into a place where the body is in balance and it's getting what it needs, and then it can start to shed weight because it doesn't feel like it has, it's not trying to like hold on to everything because you're not giving it enough. I love that. And it's such a good explanation that you just gave of why someone might want to consume more calories because it is, it's a scary thing. And if people are focused on weight loss and even up until this point in the conversation, we've been talking about calorie deficits and how important it is for actually losing weight. And then to hear someone give that explanation is brilliant. It's so good. Um, and you, you mentioned there in terms of with when working with your clients in the group coaching, but also in people following diets, whatever they are, that there's a big element of mindset when it comes to this. So I would just love to, to know, do you have any um, particular or have you noticed any mindset shifts which are particularly helpful when it comes to losing weight? And I would say particularly in women over 40, because that's the, the big base for our audience. Yeah, so mindset is everything really, or almost everything. Um, A really important thing for women to have in their mind is that they actually can do it. Like if weight loss is their goal, you have to believe that you can lose weight. And a lot of women don't. Somewhere in the back of their mind, maybe they've resigned to, I'm always going to look this way. I'm always going to be this weight. This is how my family is this is just what I'm destined for. Like I just have a bigger body and that's it. There's nothing I can do about it. Um, And yes, of course, genetically, everyone is different, but you have to believe that you can do it. Otherwise you're probably going to end up self-sabotaging or you're just setting up yourself up for failure. Um, So you kind of, you have to have this perseverance um, that you're like, you're going to stick with it whatever the journey looks like. Because weight loss is tough. It's going to be up and down. There's going to be times you lose weight and then maybe you gain a couple pounds or you go on vacation. Like life happens, it's stressful. So you have to stick with it. Um, And <clears throat> yeah, it's just really important to believe that you can do with it, you can do it, and then stick with that plan. Um, I also like to have clients like envision what it is that they want. Like when you do achieve this goal, what are you going to look like? What are you going to feel like? How are you going to dress? What is that experience going to be like for you? And the more they can sort of envision this and almost like experience it in their brain and body, the more it becomes like realistic that this is actually achievable Um, and a little bit more motivating. Like if you can continue to see yourself in that place and believe it's, it's going to happen, it is a little bit more likely that you're actually going to stick with it, um, and actually reach that goal. Um, and I was going to say something else about the belief, (laughs) forget what it was, but, um, but it's, it's also important to combat like negative thoughts about yourself, like those, I don't know if I can do it. Um, It's helpful to identify those thoughts. Like what are the negative thoughts coming into your mind about I can't, or it's never worked for me before. And that's what I was trying to remember is um, a lot of times, like I mentioned before, if you're constantly doing fad diets, they're not working or they work, you gain weight, you lose weight, you gain weight. It does set up women to think they can't do it. It's really important for people, women to understand that a lot of times it's not the diet or I mean, it's not the woman, it's the diet. Um, It's the diet that is problematic because it sets people up for failure. Like we talked about, it's not sustainable. I've heard many times like I don't have willpower or, oh, it it wasn't the diet, it was me. And it's actually the opposite. 
Um, like we talked about, diets are super hard to follow, especially the more extreme they are and especially long term. And if you're not finding a way to work it into your day to day life, it can be really challenging. So I think it's important for women to understand, especially if you're old enough, you know, your 40s or above to have gone through a lot of weight up ups and downs, um, that it's probably more the system and our our society's approach to weight loss that is kind of extreme and we're told it's supposed to be quick and easy and a lot of weight at once. Um, that's more of the issue than the actual woman herself. It's probably not that she has no willpower and she can't be trusted with food or she can't do a diet or she can't lose weight. She just has to find a better way to do it that is sustainable, that is healthy, that gives her the energy that she needs. Um, so understanding, <clears throat> understanding that, excuse me, is a big mindset shift that it's, you just have to find a better way of doing things than all of these fad diets that tend to not work for most people. I love that, that it's not the person, it's the diet. That's a really nice way to frame it because it makes it clear, doesn't it? That actually most of the time people do have this goal. They want to lose weight. It's not as you say, for lack of willpower, lack of motivation, it's actually that something about that isn't working for the person. And like we said earlier, realistically, any diet is possible to follow and you can lose weight, but it's finding what works for you, what fits your lifestyle, what's your preferences and working that in. And I guess a big thing here, really kind of reading between the lines is expectations and making sure that actually you realize that there are going to be ups and downs. It's not just going to be a smooth, you start at a 160 pounds and just go down and down and down and down. And it's always just this linear progression. It's going to be this, this kind of bumpy ride. Definitely. Yeah. I, I try to share that with my clients a lot because I want to set them up with realistic expectations. It's probably not just going to be this linear journey down and you just are going to keep losing weight forever. Um, I mean, that was my experience too. It, it really took years, I would say, for me to like settle into a weight and like body shape and size that I have now stuck with for years. But there was, you know, weight loss and a little bit of gain and then some muscle gain and then some weight loss and weight gain, right? It's sort of this like up and down journey, mostly down, but there are ups and downs throughout the process as you learn more about yourself and food and what works for you and what doesn't work for you and what you like to do for exercise and what you don't. Um, and there's always going to be stress. There's always going to be travel. There's always going to be family issues. Those are things that mess up people's quote diet plans a lot of times. Um, and it's really important to understand like, that's just, that's life. You can't get around it. Like you can't wait for the best time to start a diet or the best time to lose weight. And it's never going to be a perfect you know, downhill journey. Um, and I think that helps people to understand that if you do gain a couple pounds here or there, it's okay. That's just, it's probably part of the process. It was a rough couple weeks or whatever it was. And then you can just kind of like get things back on track as much as you can and continue in the journey. So it kind of comes back to that perseverance I mentioned. Like if you can just be patient and consistent and stick with it and expect there's going to be some hiccups along the way, that's totally okay. That's what's not really shared in media, on TV, um, in any of the cool weight loss programs. Um, so people, you know, think it's it's their problem or they can't stick with it. But it's usually a longer process requiring more patience than people probably think. Yeah, being in it for the long term. Yeah. Another quick break to remind you to give this podcast a quick rating on whatever platform you're listening on. Thanks, and let's get back to the episode. Do you think it's helpful for people to have fallback strategies or planning in advance for things? Because you mentioned like that life happens, there are holidays, there are birthdays. And one of the things I like to talk about or an analogy I like to make is if someone goes on holiday, they usually think through all of the things that they're going to do on holiday. So they think I'm going to have a beach day, I'm going to have a pool day, and as a result, they pack things for it. So they pack their swimming stuff. They pack their beach shoes. They might pack their hiking shoes if they're going on holiday. And they actively think through it. But actually, when it comes to something like their diet or weight loss, 
they often don't and they don't think about what might be coming up but do you think that's helpful for example to have a plan if they're going to a restaurant or to a birthday with like a goal in mind of how they're going to manage their nutrition because that's often a really big thing for people is managing these occasions absolutely yeah I think that's a great example like you said it's like you go on a trip and you plan everything out but a lot of people don't plan out their diet and maybe even expect they're just going to gain weight or they're just going to go eat everything because it's vacation or it's their birthday. Um, or they go the extreme opposite and they're like, I'm just going to go have chicken and broccoli for my birthday because I, you know, I'm on this weight loss plan. Um, and no one wants to do that, right? Like that's not fun. Um, so that's where that, that balance comes in. Um, but yeah, I think it's really important to help. And I, you know, I try to do this with my clients, like even if it's just going out to eat with friends, like, okay, what are you going to, what are you going to eat? Um, Some people might look at the menu before they go out and figure out, okay, what are some healthy options that I can still enjoy so you can go out and you don't feel restricted while you're with your friends or family or coworkers or whatever it may be. But you might look at the menu and figure out ahead of time, what are you going to pick so that in the moment, you're less prone to choose something that just sounds really good. Um, I used to do this all the time. It was like, that was my way of sort of preventing a bad decision in the moment. It was like, I'll just look ahead of time know what I'm going to get and I'm going to stick with my plan. Um, and yeah, it works well for things like travel as well. Um, maybe taking some healthy snacks along even like take some, you know, bags of almonds or, you know, different nuts or some dried fruit, um, protein or granola bars, like something that you can have in case there's no healthy food around or you're stuck on a plane with no food. I always pack snacks when I'm going on vacation um, just to make sure there's something healthy that I can eat if I get hungry between meals. And then they might think ahead about what types of foods are going to be there and what would be the best options for me. Like what are some lean proteins I can look for on the menu or some healthier carbohydrate sources. Um, The same would go for maybe a big family event or party or something like that is okay. What might be there and what can I eat that's going to be a healthier choice? And let me like fill my plate up with those things first, um, as opposed to just grab everything that's there. So I think mentally it does help to prepare that, yes, there is going to probably be all sorts of junk food or sweets or whatever to at, you know different places that you're going to go. So how are you going to navigate that plan ahead of time for how, you know, maybe you want to start filling up on vegetables and protein first and then see how you feel Maybe if you really want dessert, then you can go have it, but don't just eat stuff just because it's there, which is what a lot of us do. So yeah, just like you mentioned with, you know, packing for a trip, it's helpful to plan out what are you going to do when you're confronted with all sorts of food um, or less healthy options? How are you going to navigate that? Super helpful. There's some really good practical tips in there. Now, I've taken up quite a lot of your time, but there are just one or two more things that I'd love to ask you because I think really helpful and because you mentioned something in there which I wanted to go back on because even though we kind of joked about it in saying about having chicken and broccoli for for your birthday um that's actually a really important point isn't it because although when you're trying to follow a diet you're trying to be in a calorie deficit you're trying to follow something over the long term it is important to say that actually these typical fun foods or celebrating a birthday isn't completely off limits is it because that's that's not actually the aim of the diet and the lifestyle as a whole yeah I mean that's why a lot of people don't stick with it It is because they think I'm on a diet so I have to diet on my birthday I have to diet at this you know friend's party everything has to be strict eating and that's not fun that's not life like we you know most people really like food and you want to participate and you want to enjoy good foods So people tend to do better when you can incorporate some of those, like I said, fun foods into normal daily eating. Because if you think that you can only, you know, eat chicken and broccoli all the time, you're just not going to stick with it. That's where most people feel like, oh, I messed up my diet because I went to this party and I had brownies or I had a burger and fries or whatever it may be. Um, And then they feel like they really messed up and now maybe they should just keep eating unhealthy because they you know, fell off their diet. So I think it's, it's very helpful for people to incorporate those foods in and yes, feel free to go out and enjoy your birthday and have, you know, some cake or have some food that you enjoy. And it doesn't have to be a massive portion. You can still 
kind of keep an eye on the portion sizes or you can choose a healthier dish, but it doesn't have to be super restrictive and you can still enjoy enjoyable foods. Um, and that that is what really helps people to stick with healthy eating long term is if they feel like they're not restricted and they do have freedom to eat foods that they enjoy. Again, it doesn't have to be all the time, doesn't have to be out of control, but if you can have if things aren't off limits, we tend to almost not even want them as much. But as soon as you put them off limits, mentally, we just have this psychology where it's like, now you want it. And now it becomes so hard to be on a diet or trying to lose weight. So if you allow yourself to have some freedom with food, that's what usually works better for people. Yeah. Is that you, if you want, oh, if you can't have it, you want it, don't you? Yes. And, and I guess then there is that understanding, that context that that decision you make, if you have that fun food whatever we want to call it or even if you go outside your calories that's not going to ruin your whole weight loss journey and it's over the long term not going to have a big impact so actually then you just get back on it you carry on and just move forwards yeah exactly and so this kind of links to it really but do you have any top bits of advice that you would give to women over 40 who are starting a weight loss journey how can they stay motivated committed to what they to their goal yeah, I mean, most of my recommendations are not um, super sexy or exciting. Um, you know, often it's not aren't when they're the the best. the The honest ones from the experts usually aren't. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, exercising on a regular basis that plays a really big role, especially as we're getting older. Like I mentioned before, we really need to keep muscle on our bodies. Um, just for general health, but also to help keep our metabolism up. We want to make sure our bone health is good. Um, so exercising and actually using weights, like getting your muscles burning, doing some cardiovascular exercise that gets your heart rate up. That's super important. Um, exercise plays a really big role in not only weight loss, but just feeling good and staying healthy long term. Um, so that's really important to make sure that people are getting into their day. Um, and like we've talked about, kind of a balanced way of eating. So you can cut calories and you can, you know, kind of even play around with things like carbohydrates. There's different ranges that people can do that are going to work better for some people, but making sure that you're getting in fruits and vegetables, getting organic if you can, um, and avoiding the highly processed food. So avoiding a lot of like the fast foods or the processed meats or, um, you know, a lot of the things that come in packages these really like almost more man-made foods, um, avoiding it, those as often as possible. Again, you don't have to cut them out. They're not off limits, but just reducing them and instead eating more um, lean proteins, whole grains, legumes, beans, fruits and veggies, just natural foods that have fiber in them, right? They're like come from the earth naturally. Um, those are, that's going to work much better for people is having some balance and focusing on the good quality foods because you're going to be getting more vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, all the things that we need to stay healthy. And there's been also research that has shown like if people eat the exact same food, one is highly processed and one is more natural based, the people who have the like more natural foods have kind of more of like a higher metabolic response afterwards because it's harder for the body to break down those more natural fibrous foods. So it basically expends more energy um, to eat healthier foods than it does to eat processed foods. So it's far easier to gain weight on those more processed foods and like high sugar foods. And it's easier to lose weight when you're eating a more natural diet. So if people can just focus not so much on you know, cutting out food groups or the exact amount of carbs, protein, and fat, but eat a good balanced diet where it's really focused on getting as many nutrients into your diet as you can, you're going to have an easier time losing weight. And I know you mentioned in your other podcast about like fiber. Fiber keeps you full. It's good for your health, helping to lower cholesterol. It's going to keep you more satisfied. So you're probably going to eat less anyway if you're eating a more whole food based diet, you're going to eat less food and have an easier time losing weight. Amazing. And some top tips there for people. And I think everything else that we've covered so far is just 
Awesome. Um, so Holly, thank you so much for coming on and chatting with me. I'm really grateful for you to give your time up and share your experience with our listeners, because I know it's going to be helpful for so many of them. So where can people find out a bit more about you? Yeah, so if they want to connect or learn more, uh, my website is renewalfitcoach.com. And that same uh, Renewal Fit Coach is the handle that I use for Instagram, YouTube, uh, Facebook, and those are kind of the main places that I hang out. So I'm on Instagram the most, but I do also have a YouTube channel um, and then the website. So I'd love to connect with any of your listeners there. Amazing. And we'll put it in the show notes with links to Holly's website and all her social media. So thanks again, Holly, and we'd love to speak to you again in the future. All right. Thank you so much for having me.